What's up guys, how's it going? Today we're gonna to be going over another interview question. Today our interview question is called minimum domino rotation for equal row, and this is a question that's currently being asked by Google right now. Okay guys, so today the interview question we're gonna be going over is called minimum domino rotations for equal row. And right now, as of late February, 2020, this is actually the most frequently asked question at Google according to Leak Code. So this is a really important question to know. And our problem description says, in a row of dominoes, A, I, and B, I represent the top and bottom halves of the ith domino. A domino is a tile with two numbers from one to six on each, one on each half of the tile. We may rotate the ith domino so that A, I, and B, I swap values and they want us to return the minimum number of rotations so that all the values in A are the same or all the values in B are the same. And if it cannot be done, they tell us to return negative one. Okay, so we're given basically, uh, I guess they tell us, I think in the notes, yeah, they tell us that we have six dominoes or between one and six dominoes. And we're basically asked to make all the values in the top half of all those dominoes or all the values in the bottom half of all those dominoes be the same. And if we can do that, we want to do it in the minimum number of swaps possible, where a swap is simply flipping one of the dominoes, where AI and BI are the top half and bottom half uh, values just swip, swip, swap. <laughs> so in our example here, example one, they give us this nice little diagram. And if this was our input, meaning that this, these are the values of the top halves of the dominoes, and these are the values of the bottom halves of the dominoes, we'd output two. And the reason for that, as we can see in this diagram, is if this is the original configuration of our dominoes here, we could swap the second domino and the fourth domino, have them both turn, right? And that would allow our top half, top halves of all the dominoes to have the value two, which is what we want here. And that is the minimum number of swaps uh, that would allow us to create, you know, a set of dominoes where the top half all have a specific value or we could have done it so that the bottom halves all have a specific value, but that would have taken more swaps, so we don't want to do that. And they tell us here that the explanation is the first figure represents the dominoes as given by A and B before we do any rotations, which is what we just said. And then the explanation at the bottom here says, if we rotate the second and fourth dominoes, we can make every value in the top row equal to two, as indicated by the second figure, which is again what we just reviewed. So we'd return two here because that's the minimum number of swaps that it takes for to configure the dominoes in such a way basically that all the values in the top half uh, have the value two, and that's minimum in this case. For example, two here, these were our values. So again, we have, well now we have five dominoes, uh, and these are the values of the top and bottom halves respectively, A and B. We'd output negative one, and the reason for that is there's just no possible way to make any swaps so that the top half uh, of all the dominoes have the same value or the bottom half of all the dominoes have the same value. And they tell us that in this case, it is not possible to rotate the dominoes to make one row of values all equal. And just as notes here, we're told that AI and BI will always have values between one and six inclusive. Okay, and then we're also told that the length of A and B uh, is always between two and 20,000 inclusive. So we could have between two and 20,000 dominoes. So with that being said, how do we solve this? I think the key to this problem and the important thing to realize is that regardless of how many different dominoes you have, there are only so many different possibilities that we can try, right? Or there are only, there's so many limiting factors. So if we actually think about this problem here, right, that we're given with this diagram, we could have had 20,000 dominoes. It doesn't really matter. The limiting factor is that we have basically uh, four different possibilities, right? The top value, right, the top left value, we can try and make all the dominoes match that, right? So that's one possibility. We can try and make every single value in A match two, right? That's one possibility. The next thing that we could try and do is we could try and make every single value in A in the top row match B zero. That's two possibilities. The third possibility is that we can try and make every value in B match A zero. And the fourth value is that we could try, or the fourth possibility is that we could try and make every single value in B match B zero. So regardless of how many different dominoes we have, that's really the limiting factor. We have those four different possibilities. Every single value in A has to match A zero, or every single value in A has to match B zero, or every single value in B has to match A zero. And finally, every 
or finally, every single value in B has to match B0. So once we realize that, this problem becomes a lot more simplified, um, and it's really not that hard to try and simulate all of those four different possibilities. So what I'm gonna try and do here with this problem is I'm going to first write the code that will simulate those permutations or those possibilities, those four different simulations really. Um, and from that, we're gonna return you know, like what would ever give us the minimum number of swaps if it's possible to do that. So before even writing this helper function, I just wanna flesh out what that structure would look like, and then we'll go and write the helper function that'll actually help us determine how many number of swaps we need to actually solve this problem. So to kind of sketch out those four different possibilities, we said the minimum number of swaps, right? So int min swaps, we're gonna say is equal to math.min, and now we're gonna give those two different possibilities that we just talked about, or the first two, right? So the first two is going to be whatever this function that we're gonna write returns. So num swaps, when we're trying to make A and B both adhere to A0, right? That's one value, that's one possibility. Um, the next thing that we said we could try is what about the number of swaps that it takes to match B0 for A and B, right? So that's one, you know, two, two things that we can compare, right? So the how many swaps does it take to match all of A with A0? How many swaps does it take to match all of A with B0? And then we could do the same sort of thing, but just for the other two, right? So now we could say min swaps is gonna be equal to math.min of whatever our min swaps are currently and the number of swaps that it takes to make B0 as our target for A. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing, except we're going to, well, first we wanna reverse these, right? B and A. And then similarly here, for just consistently, let's do this. So now we're, we've actually gone through all the different simulations of the possibilities that we have, right? We could say, make everything match A0 passing A and B, make everything in A match B0, make everything in B match A0, or make everything in B match B0. So now those are the four possibilities. And then finally here, what we'd have to return is we wanna return if our min swaps is equal to some impossible thing, right? Because we need to account for the case where this is not possible, we need to return negative one. So I'm thinking we can basically make this function return something like integer.max value if it's not possible. So if our min swaps is integer.max value, let's say, let's return negative one, and then otherwise we could just return however many swaps it takes. So now all that's really left to do basically is just write that helper function that will help us determine how many number of swaps it takes to get to a point where, you know, whatever uh, possibility we're on to make the entire top row or bottom row match that specific target value we want. So we could say public, this will return an integer, meaning the number of swaps that it will take. We call this num swaps. And we said we're gonna have a target value, and then we're gonna have two integer arrays A and B. So again, what this is really saying is it's saying, how many swaps will it take to try and make A match this target value of A0? Similarly, how many swaps will it take to make, make A match the value of, or the target of B0? So on and so forth. Okay, so initially we haven't made any swaps, right? So we could just say int num swaps equals zero. And now what we wanna do is we wanna walk through the dominoes and just see if it's possible to actually make swaps accordingly such that we can actually get to, you know, some number of swaps that it takes to make the entire target uh, appear in all of A. So we're gonna say four, into i equals zero, while i is less than a dot length, i plus plus. And now we just wanna check if a of i is not equal to the target that we want, and if b of i is also not equal to that thing, then it's impossible, right? So that's saying if the target at a doesn't match, or if the domino at a of i doesn't match our target, and swapping wouldn't help, then it's impossible, right? There's no possible way we can make all the pop, all the dominoes match that value, so we'd return integer.max value. And b of i is not equal to target, then we return integer.max value. But what if we're in the case where ai is not equal to target, but then here that would mean that bi equals the target, well then that's awesome, all we do is pay one 
swap, right? We have to make one swap and then we can make that row have that target or I should really say the specific domino that we're on have that target. So we would just say num swaps plus plus. And so basically if we ever get to a point where we finish this loop, that means that we've successfully swapped all of our dominoes to the target value that we want. And we would just return the number of swaps that it took to do so. So now to review this code again wholeheartedly, what do we have? Well, we're saying the minimum number of swaps to make the target A appear in all of A, minned with the number of swaps it takes to make the target B0 appear in all of A. That's initially our number of swaps, so that could be integer.max value if it's impossible, or it'll be some number if it is possible. Then we're just gonna say, okay, simulate the other possibilities to get uh, B to have the target A0, and similarly have B get the value or the target B0. And then once we've you know, simulated all those different four possibilities, we're just gonna return if our minimum number of swaps is not our max value or integer not max value, that means it was possible, right? So we'll return the minimum swaps and if it wasn't possible, we'll return negative one. So let's talk about our runtime quickly. The runtime really is just going to be O of N, right? We could say O of N where N is the number of dominoes that we have because even though we're doing this four different times, four is a constant, right? So no matter how big our dominoes are or how many dominoes we have, we're only gonna try those four different possibilities so that constant doesn't scale with our input. So we'd say that this is O of N where N is the number of dominoes that we're given. And then I would say that the space complexity similarly, uh, or I guess not similarly, but it would just be constant, right? Because we just have a couple variables and that's all that we need to solve this problem. So I'd say that the runtime is O of N where N is the number of dominoes that we're given and say that the space complexity is constant or O of one. So let's run this, let's make sure that it works. Awesome, it does. So guys, that's how to solve minimum domino rotations for equal row. Again, this is the most frequently asked question according to lead code at Google right now. If you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful, do me a favor, leave the video a like and subscribe to the channel for more. And I'll see you guys in the next one.